from? Jaffrey. Jaffrey, ah. Look at some of your really old colonial homes down in Jaffrey with the heavy wooden shutters. We still use the term Indian shutters for those homes. That's exactly what where it came from, okay? Why don't we come on in the house? When you're coming through the house, I want you to look for any signs of indoor plumbing. <laughs> okay? Now, that's going to be really important. Look for any signs of indoor plumbing as we're coming through this house. Here we go. It's a bucket. I saw this truck in the dojo. I thought they had a bucket. 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 So look for any, see if they have any sinks or any toilets. Okay. Now, if you've been looking at the trimmer, uh, I cannot talk over people, please. Okay? Thank you. If you're looking at the primer, I want somebody to take, if you know what these were used for, or if you want to take a guess as to what they might have been used for, please put your hand up. Yes. Okay, notice what she said. She's absolutely right. To teach people how to read, how to form words from the alphabet, how to form numbers. She didn't say to teach people how to write because that's not what they were used for. Reading and writing were taught separately in the 18th century. Not in conjunction the way we teach it today. Far more people knew how to read than knew how to write. I had an ancestor who could read newspapers and books. The only thing he could sign was, was his name. And he was fine with that. Puts a whole new spin on what it means to on what it means to be literate, doesn't it? Okay, it really does. Okay? Now, a couple of things. I wanted to ask you folks a question. Did you see any signs of uh, indoor plumbing as you come through here? No. Any signs of electric light, electricity? Any sinks? No. Yeah, any lights? Okay. Could, that sinks. Could, that Could that be plumbing? Could that be plumbing? That's a hole now, to shoot your okay. gun out if you get it. Now, what we have here, okay, folks, the Parkers were very wealthy people, and yet they had no indoor plumbing, okay? How do we know that they were wealthy people? There are various signs, somewhat pretty subtle throughout this house, okay? What might have been a sign of wealth? The china on the cabinet. Ah, good for you, the china on the cabinet. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Good for you. What else? Um, these candle holders and those clothes hanging up there. Possibly the clothes, not so much the candle holders, but you were right. People, people judged other people back then by how they dressed. Maybe not very fair, but that's what they did. Other little things like plaster walls. Were, were correct for the frontier in the 1750s, they were a sign of wealth. As was glass in the window panes, that was a sign of wealth. And two other, and they also find China. Now, Mrs. Parker, we have, we have records, Mrs. Parker ordered from Phineas Stevens in his fair trade house a nice set of bone china, okay, from China, because she wanted a nice set of china to entertain her family and friends. Now, when your folks order something, about how long does it take to get it? I know that varies. But about how long? Online? Yeah, hold on. About seven days? Sometimes seven days. Two days, sometimes four days. Sometimes two days, four days, yeah. Overnight delivery from Amazon, all of that, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. What if you ordered something that you really wanted to have and something that was going to be very special and precious to you? And it took you two and a half years to get it. Okay. Poor Mrs. Parker, right? Did she have an alternative? No. Not up here she didn't. Okay? Now, what do we know about fine china? That you got to be very careful. What do we know about? It breaks very easily. Yeah, it breaks very easily. I can only hope. 
after her two and a half year wait that all of Mrs. Parker's china arrived here in town. Okay. Now, above, over here on the wall, we have something. And you can unlatch that and pull that little block of wood down, if you'd like. It has two little latches on the sides. Be careful, one person, please. Thank you. There you go. Perfect. Now, what, what, what do you think that was used for? Yes. Um, to put, you could put, like, the end of your gun here and you could shoot. It's a musket port. Again, here's a home designed as much for defense as it was to create a home and raise a family. Why doesn't everybody come in here with me? Don't push. You two, don't push. No, oh, I can't. I didn't see it. Oh, okay. it I Let's just get out. Oh, oh my god. Hi, YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Hey, What up? One young person noted the clothes hanging on the hooks as a sign of wealth. Okay, very observant, because back in the 18th century, you were judged by how you dressed, okay, and, uh, whether you were poor or wealthy. Today, of course, it's a little more relaxed. If you see somebody wearing T-shirts and jeans, you don't know if he's got $2 in his wallet or the keys to that Ferrari in the parking lot. You don't know. You don't know. Okay? Back then, it was very different. If I were coming through here to do business with Isaac Parker, I would not come dressed like this. I'm dressed as a laborer. I would find the best clothes I own, and I would put them on. Because I knew that Isaac Parker would always be formally dressed. Always. Okay? In fact, if you were the Parker children, you wanted to hang out in your pajamas all day long, fine, do it upstairs. Hmm. The minute you came down here, you had to be formally dressed. For boys, that would mean jackets and ties, gray flannels and black leather dress shoes. For girls, nice party dresses. No <coughs> questions asked. That's how you dress. Now, yes, hand up. What would happen if you 